Come on, Rangers! Come on, Rangers! This is the whole game. No single fixture marks the rise of Dorking Wanderers more than the away trip to Oldham Athletic, a club that was in the Premiership back when it was called that. On day one to be exact, a founding member in 1992, Oldham were one minute away from beating Manchester United in an FA Cup semi-final in 1994, only for Mark Hughes to equalise. Oldham lost the next seven league games and were relegated from the top flight. They've yet to return. To some, that Hughes goal was the beginning of a decline that has yet to reach an adir. 28 years later, Oldham have become the first ever former Premier League side to enter non-league football after several years of mismanagement, in particular under the controversial ownership of former football agent Abdallah Lemzegum. Fan protests and boycotts played a part in forcing Lemzegum from the club and in spite of this being Oldham's first ever season outside of the EFL, there's a carnival atmosphere at Boundary Park for their first home game of the season, thanks to the arrival of Frank Rothwell, seen here in the flat cap obviously. Rothwell's a local businessman slash porter cabin tycoon, who among other things, is renowned for raising a million quid for charity by rowing across the Atlantic, circumnavigating North and South America, beating cancer, and building a coal-powered Land Rover. As much as this is a day of celebration, it's not all about Oldham, but this is a key moment in the history of Dorking Wanderers. Their first ever game on live telly, their first National League trip to a stadium of 14,000 seats, and we haven't got a third thing. Regardless, Mark White's task today is to have his team focus on the opposition and forget the circus that Rothwell's introduction is bringing to the big match. And it's important, I, the, 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 the test now for some of these boys will be you know, do they get affected by adverse crowd noise? Do they get affected by a bad five minutes? You know, Meadowbank, it might not make a difference, but here, if the crowd are on their back, it might change the way they play. So it, they have to just do business as usual today and then see where they end up with it, do you know what I mean? And, uh, and, and I think the, way, the team we're playing allows us to be business as usual. I, I'm less worried about their dangers than I would be most teams. I think their dangers are obvious as opposed to distinct and unique. So we're, 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 we're football teams, we're prepared for obvious dangers, you know. There's a fucking brass band about to play behind us. And what I'm waiting for now is Timmy Mallet to fucking abseil in from the floodlight with uh, the new owner, Fair Deal Frank, hanging off him. That's the thing, like, brass bands, there's a national anthem and stuff, like, how hard do you think it's going to be to block all of that out? No, it's, for me, it's fine, mate. I just, I just think, you know what, we've earned the right to enjoy it as well. You know, I want the boys to be business as usual, the coaches, but we've earned the right to enjoy the whole situation. You know, um, you can't just start putting a fear of God into people about being at Oldham. Bottom line is we've earned the right to be here, do you know what I mean? So um, let's enjoy it and enjoy the fact that we're coming to a club with such a unique setup. I mean, it is remarkable that we're in this situation. I actually think we're all blessed today to, to Oldham. I mean, I'm looking at the fans and the, how the smiles on their faces. The town has got their club back and we can be part of that little story today. And hopefully they'll go, look, it don't matter the fucking result, don't matter the mighty one just beat us, because uh, we've got our club back. You're about to go on to BT Sport of the interview. How hard is it going to be to not sweat? <laughs> fucking difficult. But you know what, it is what it is, isn't it? Um, maybe show it after fucking nine o'clock or something, do you know what I mean? But listen, they support the league and that's fantastic. Money gets put in the clubs, so that's brilliant, do you know what I mean? Really appreciate it. This is just our surroundings now, that's it. So let's not start thinking like anything, nothing's changed. All that's changed is that we were too good for the league below and we belong in this division and the grounds look bigger. So nothing changes, yeah? But I might have to ask your mentality to be really good because there are little negligibles, yeah? It's going to be really, really fucking loud today, yeah? So I said to a few of the boys, it's a bit like fucking Fury in Germany fighting Klitschko, like the best sportsmen, the best players understand how to, you know, block out and do their thing. You know, and it's important now because you, this can be you sometimes is start looking about at crowds and, you know, worrying about anything that's going on. Yeah. You know, the best sportsmen, players, 
play in any arena, in any circumstance. So what you've got to do brilliantly, when there's 5,000 behind the goal, and, you know, you, first of all, we might not keep passing back to Slav if there's 5,000, but if you skew one as a keeper or as a left back, right back, whatever, and they, Whoa, you get the big noise. No, the best of the best. Just reset really quickly. Concentrate on what you do. And I want to see some brilliant mental strength today because I think their biggest thing in their favour by far is the crowd. Because as a team, they're not a patch on Chesterfield, right? So they'll either be a 3-5-2 or 4-4-2. So we know how they play. If they're a 3-5-2, overload at the back, we know what to do. Anything else, we've done it a million times. Full press, we've done it a million times. Today really is just about you doing what you normally do. It's about you playing the way Wanderers play. Forward passing as much as possible. That's what to do, right? And the back four today, if you like, the back three in a holding player is Ed, Isaac, Bobby and Moro. What it does mean is you've got to be really compact. Because when it breaks down, they're putting it there. Um, us is just what we do. Full press, just pass the fucking ball, boys. This is the, this is the least information I'll ever give you. Just do business as usual, Dawkins Wanderers. Like we played for four years. Business as usual. Make sure your discipline's brilliant because it's TV game. Um, and fucking, you know, eight officials and all that shit. So just make sure our discipline's fantastic. Yeah, okay, all right? This is our arena now. This is, this is where we play. This is how it is. And it's important. That is really important. It can be noisy and a big build-up. Right before kickoff, off sing a national anthem. So we just got to be doing our own thing. Coaches, get balls on the pitch. So, you know, so if there's any stuff going on just before kickoff, we're just getting little circles down, ignoring everything. It's all about what we do. The bits we do do need to be short, sharp, especially the talking, because there's, it's a, it might be noisy and time calls are a big deal. All right, okay, boys? So, shitload of faith in us, great pitch to play on. All we care about is three fucking points, not the circus, us and three points, okay? So we've got to get really switched on. Okay, boys? All right, good, good. <laughs> We've had owners that really didn't do much for the club or the community. Um, we've been down, going down and down, go down, you know. So we've now hit a new town low. Um, hopefully, with things moving upwards now with our new owner, and hopefully we can do it on the pitch now for now on. Darkin have had. They've only been going 20 odd years, and they've had I don't know how many promotions, and, and we've we had are. absolutely nothing in 30 odd years. So, so, uh, uh, that's like relegations, like, that's what yeah. we've had in the, yeah. in the last 30 years. Crap so yeah. what, the guy who owns Dorking, what, I know he does everything, what doesn't he do for Dorking? <laughs> he doesn't make his own tea. Uh, you've got your Exums that have got money behind them. You've got your other clubs like Notts County, um, Scunthorpe, so that have just gone down. So yeah, it's going to be a struggle this year. Mm. Hopefully we can do something, but we'll see. And are you excited about the prospect of being in non league football? Yes. Yeah, mainly because of the change of ownership. We wouldn't even be here if it weren't for the change of ownership. We were boycotting. So, we're, uh, so yeah. So, yeah. Did you boycott? Yeah, yeah. We, we've, uh, we, we missed a lot of the games last year. We came back when Sheridan was appointed right. um, for the final few games. But apart from that, we haven't been, no. It must have been a hell of a thing to have to boycott your own club. Yeah, terrible. Yeah, but I mean, it shows today, looking at the crowds and everybody here, that it's worked and we've got new ownership. So Start of a new era. You know, we've got new chairman, new owner, new board. The regime of the last four years has completely failed us and brought us to this point. They're gone and now we're just full of optimism that we're going to go even higher and get back into the Football League. You know, we're the next Premiership team, aren't we? And yeah. we've got, no disrespect to Dorking, but we've got Dorking coming. Everybody's turning up. We've got 8,500 people here who we've not had here for God knows how long. And the bubble's going to burst. <laughs> <laughs> got to be expecting an Oldham win, but I, just, I expect Dorking to put up a good fight today. What Mark's done with these lads over the last few years is actually pretty incredible. He said I've been keeping a track of it on, on the bunch of amateurs TikTok channel and yeah, 
it's absolutely astonishing what he's achieved to be fair to him it's new ownership new new era for the club if we win brilliant if we lose we lose again but this t a few months ago we thought we were losing the club so you know we don't we, we don't mind yeah we can put it down to a rocky start for the first first like maybe three or four matches but after that i think that's when questions will start to be asked <laughs> Mark, that journey continues. Did you envision all those years ago when you set this side up you'd be taking on a former Premier League side today? No, no. I'd be lying if I said we did. No, it's fantastic. And uh, the club was such uh, steeped in history and, uh, you know, a real privilege to be at somewhere like Boundary Park and especially with them having such an amazing day. As the record says, we're never here to make the numbers up, so we're here to win. Mark, thank you very much. Best of luck for today. Thanks, mate. Cheers, Mark. Thank you very Cheers, much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. And Sam 352, John Sam 4231. Don't listen. Well, that's, that's the text. Lads, who have they bought in then from last week? Who have they bought in from last week? John and, uh, and the Northern Scout are saying different things. John saying he thinks 4231, and saying he thinks 352. I think they're 352, yeah? This is brilliant. I'd rather that if I could choose it, yeah? A chance to cut inside and score 40 yards, you do it, son, okay? This is ideal for your natural game. Hello, right, boys. How are we doing? Do you know who you remind me of? Go on. Del Boy Trotter. Mate, fucking. But <laughs> well, what about Alf Garnet then? <laughs> You're a fucking lot, Fair deal, mate. Frank. <laughs> Cheers, boys. Remember, forget noise, forget scoreline, forget anything. You've got a long time just to keep the ball and play well. Worst case, we have to have 10, 15 minutes of the noisy crowd. How clever can we be? So when we, if, if it, I'm just giving you a worst case. It might not happen. We might fucking be 2 up. Worst case, it's noisy. And when it goes into the winger, we fall on the ball. We take a foul. We slow the game down. You know, just be clever. All right. But I'm telling you now, for me, just get on the ball. Just get on the fucking ball and be efficient with the ball. All right, let's go. We know what we're doing. Come on, Come on boys. a fucking patch on that lot last week. Forget fuck all, forget any moment. You are a far better side than this lot. Get the fucking ball down, show them fuck all respect. Not one bit of fucking respect. Cheers, mate. All right, mate. Yeah, good, mate, yeah. Coming for a drink if you want a drink after you. What a great day for you lot, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, John. The atmosphere inside Boundary Park is rocking and the Oldham players will inevitably get a lift. So the pertinent question is, will the Dorking players be able to focus? Clear, mate! Put your flag up quicker! That was slow! That was slow, mate! You see that's our boat. Don't wait for the ref! You can see that! Coach Carl has spotted that Oldham are playing three at the back. And until now, the coaches have been unsure as to whether they're up against a back three or a back four. If Oldham were to play a long ball game as expected, it's not a major issue. And Dorking do tend to enjoy it when a team matches their 3-5-2 shape. Oldham looked to start the fastest, but Dorking don't seem overawed by the atmosphere and they soon take control of the ball. Josh Taylor is a driving force in midfield, while Bobby Joe Taylor is finding plenty of space to run into. Possession, but it's Oldham who fashioned the first chance. 
Charlie Cooper picks out advancing defender and captain Liam Hogan, and he sets up Hallam Hope for a free header. As predicted, it's Dorking who are looking for the short stuff while the Latics look to launch the ball upfield. Dorking's build up play remains patient as they look to avoid giving the ball away cheaply. Well, at least until Luke Moore gets it in the middle of the park. Moro's uncharacteristic error allows Ben Tollett to play in Hallam Hope and his first time shot nestles in the bottom corner to give the home side the lead. <laughs> 20 minutes in, Ryan and Alfie finally create enough space to get a shot in, but Alfie's effort is blocked. resulting corner eventually lands at the feet of the ever-lively Bobby Joe Taylor. Bobby cuts in as instructed pre-game, but Latics goalkeeper Magnus Norman parries well. Most of Dorking's danger is emanating from the maverick feet of Bobby Joe, who again tests Norman with a drive from outside the box. Oldham might be winning, but their gaffer John Sheridan is far more frustrated with his players than his counterparts. I'm doing my best to film the action, but it seems dressing up in a giant owl costume makes it acceptable to disturb someone while they're working. I need you to listen, lads. The game is sideways overloads, yeah? And the game is taking touches and keeping the ball, yeah, OK? You're all over them now. The game's settled down, you're all over them, yeah? Beat the first man, we'll score a goal, OK? Great spell. Dorking's play requires the front pair to bring the midfielders into the action when they receive the ball. But like Alfie, Ryan Seeger is struggling to hold the ball up for his team. Oldham haven't threatened Dorking since their goal, but that changes on the half-hour mark when another long ball gets them up the pitch. Offside, offside. Ben Tollett's drive is parried by Slav Huck, and Chris Porter taps in the rebound, only to discover he was offside when the first shot came in. The Wanderers soon get back on top, and while Josh Taylor does hit a dangerous drive, goalkeeper Norman says, not now, as he parries away, presumably. At the other end, the Oldham strikers are looking far more potent. Time approaching, Liam Hogan and Charlie Cooper combine to give Dorking a free kick opportunity. Right foot, Bobby! Bobby! Mark wants a right footer to take the free kick, but the players can't hear his demands. Mate, that's close, isn't it? Right, listen. 
uh, generally, generally really good off. Moro, yeah. stop, stop doing anything narrow. This game, and you're normally unbelievable at it, just like you done a minute ago, this game is just rolling it to Isaac or Bobby. That is all this game needs. All it needs. If all you've done the whole game, centre mid, is give it to Isaac or Bobby, and then got in the box, we'll score a goal, and we'll score two or three. Don't feel like you need to thread needles. Ed, the thing you've done a minute ago is perfect. Don't, don't slow it down too much, but you know, the more you travel, he comes in, then you go, go on then Bobby, you have it. You then know that the only bloke who can pick you up is the bloke he's just lobbed, or someone out of position. Yeah? Right? Seeks, coming into the game now, you take your fouls, you take your touches. Alfie, your touches, take your touches outside of the player. Don't take them into the middle. I think you've got away with a couple when you've turned in the middle and they've not expecting it. Right? You two for me can be better in this game. First of all, you're out playing a team at their manner. You're out playing them comfortably. Comfortably. Your first, your second, your third. It's excellent. It's really, really good. Here's the thing. You're not using your intelligence enough, your balls in the box. You cannot, th this game needs balls whipped in the box. The keeper's coming out like this. You played a really good one just before then. So what it needs, it either needs Bob or your Isaac, whip them in, whipping them in the box. So when we get the ball out to these two, let them make the box. They're playing on the counter-attack. And that means, counter-attack means, if you give them the ball, like when we gave them the goal, they're off. They're kicking towards their fans now. Yeah? They've shown absolutely zero, except when you've given them the ball. Their gaffer's saying we're getting passed off the pitch. You're bossing them. It doesn't matter what the score is when we come out of here, to be frank. It doesn't matter. Because we're on the upgrade. We're fucking at a, we're, we're at a bare fucking minimum pre-season, barely any 90s. We're on the upgrade. We're old them, out playing them. Bobby, don't slow the game down. You're probably, at the moment, our best player, right? And especially, that's why you're playing today, that effectiveness of being an overload. Don't slow it down. Understand your role. When you get the ball high, it's a two on one. So we've done it once, didn't we? If Bobby is high and he checks out and Maka does the bit where he drops himself out and Isaac, he needs you threatening. So if it, he might be high and you'll see him check back out. When he checks back out, you drop in. Yeah, you go. Because they ain't up to speed with that, boys. Right? That is where you two can win the game for us. We can win this game. Comfortably. Right, comfortably, okay, yeah? But right, even if they get another goal, no issue. Right, we're playing really well, and we're playing well in front of the cameras. Fucking love that boy. We're showing them what we do. But we ain't here for so fucking sympathy vote. Oh, fuck me, they played well. Give away a ball for a goal. We're here to get the next goal in the next 10 minutes, and then they're thinking, this team are outplaying us. It's one all, and they're outplaying us. That's a problem. Ref's had a good game. He's let, he's let you off a fucking big book in there. Mac, obviously, you'll be sensible, yeah? Okay? Listen, listen, Bob, let me, I'm fucking chief motivator, Bobby. Right, okay, yeah, that's my role. I'm fucking head of the motivation department. Do you know what I'm saying, yeah? Boys, it ain't about, it ain't about, it is about, it's about showcasing how good this club is and how good you are. Let's, that is a fact of the matter, okay, yeah? But it's also about what we do to people. Right, let's have a great second half, you two. Get your first National League goal. The only thing you've got to do here is go left and right, left and right, okay? Come on. We have noticed that Oldham are wearing a Hummel kit. The only brand we like almost as much as fcfootballkit.com. It's a close call as to who makes the nicest kits out of those two. Dorking are picking up where they left off, sitting in their opponent's half and probing for an opening. Bobby, 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 go on. Oh, it could be wider, Bob. Seeks, well done. Seeks going to score, you know. Not like that, yeah. They're the ones who scores, I don't mind that. Yeah, who scores them. Great tackle. Oh! 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 Fucking booking him! Why did he stop the fucking game? What did he stop the fucking game for? Oh, it's fucking man. shit, mate. That is shit. You don't stop the game because you're booking him. Now come on, Bob. Get up. Travel. Deliver. What 
So pull. Pull. Oh, right. Oh, come on, Crawley. The pressure is relentless, but the Dorking attack, when it remains blunt. With Alfie unable to do anything with the ball in the Oldham box, it leaves Dorking open to a counter-attack. The Dorking inquest into the killer blow commences immediately, but from an Oldham perspective, Luke Burgess drives down the middle of the pitch and slips a perfect pass into Chris Porter, who in turn puts the ball through Slav's legs. Two counter attacks. Yet again, the ball bounces free of the Dorking attack and Oldham counter. It's enough to drive Josh Taylor crazy. Every single time, that's what it frustrates. Charlie Cooper's free kick curls around the wall, but Slav does well to repel. To their credit, Dorkin have not given up. Bobby Joe drives on and Alfie's flick gets Bob in behind. Few seem to notice, but Ryan Seeger has a fair shout at a penalty here. When we're down there, Debbie, don't try and thread too much. Keep it on the outside of them, right, OK? More of a Yeah, more of a As Jack Jeb enters the fray, Oldham are countering again, with sub Mike fondop Tallum going down easier than a creme brulee. Dorking Wall easily deals with the free kick, but the visitors can't clear, and Ben Tollett picks up the ball before canoe canoeing. Thanks, also correct. A shot off of Ed Harris to make it 3 0. Boys, you must play forward. You must play forward, right? And you've got to keep it simple. Hear me. You've got to have a good half hour here, boys, OK? You've got to be good now. You've got to be compact. Don't... Listen, we ain't getting shit. I'm telling you now, we ain't getting shit. Be compact, nick a goal. Let them worry. See how we get on. But don't start thinking this is a gung-ho job, because it ain't. Right, sit fucking, sit tight, OK? Dawkins crosses into the box have been dangerous all game, but their conversion rate is... Well, it's, it's zero. I guess it's pretty obvious. Jack Jeb has been brought on to make something happen, but he's setting up Hollywood balls like his Baroness Marie Helene de Rothschild. May have, may have gone too far with that one. Jebby! Jebby, are you there? Stay there? James McShane has a dig at goal and Alfie gets shoved to the floor. The lad is being bullied, like my dad on his first day at school in 1952. Some other kid kicked his little briefcase over. It was such a sad story. I wish he hadn't told me that one. These defenders are going to try and bully Alfie. If they think he's a sulker, they'll bully him every week. This is not a fucking thing. This is not, this is not a free of game. Give me that pen. Simple! When the person in the crowd behind us started blowing that foghorn, we prayed to a god we don't believe in for Dorking to score, if only to get them to shut the fuck up. There is a god. How long is that? How long ago? 
Yet another quality cross from Bobby Joe hits the penalty area. This time Josh Taylor is in position to nod it goalwards, giving Dorking a deserved, if somewhat unlikely, lifeline. Come again! Rock up! Come on, get it back! Go on, go on! Switch! Crosses! Crosses! Shots! Turn up! The 70 old fans who ventured north for the match are starting to believe in the comeback. Alfie's day has been so tough and we've highlighted that so much, we're not going to dwell on who got the last touch here. All we're going to say is Dorkin are back in the game. Jimmy, come on! Who's got Sorry, get it for us! Go around! Get up! Yeah, keep down the back! Keep down the back! Keep down the back! The Latics' undeserved lead has crumbled like so many tasty desserts and Dorking are ready to apply the custard. Bobby, why? Why? Bobby, why? Yes! That's a fucking bad tackle! That's a fucking bad tackle, that is! Follow up! Follow up! Follow up! Jack Jeb gets his David Beckham versus Grease moment. Jebby. Opportunity knocked, but sadly, Jeb hid behind the sofa. Because your adrenaline's going more, they put more on it. Bobby, kick that higher! Oh, off you go! Off you go! Oh, oh, oh. Go on, son! Forward! Forward! Go for it! Over! Get landed! Get landed! The Oldham fans are more nervous than a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. And yes, we've used that before. We're trying to turn it into a catchphrase so we can sell t-shirts. TV coverage doesn't generally show pitch invaders, but this pisshead is way too entertaining to ignore, especially with his playground style attempts to trip the steward up. Mate. This is a very, 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 very mixed review of that game because oh, unilaterally, very proud of the performance, but we're not here to be fannies that are happy, looking good, and not winning. We don't, we don't want people to feel sorry for us. Their fans on Twitter are like, like, fuck me, what a team Dorkin are. I can't have a go at Moro for that mistake because he just doesn't make them mistakes. So I'm okay with that to a degree. But without that mistake, you see what happened the minute we score goal. Without giving them that early goal. Right, Mark, you did a good interview. What, right a second? Well, when, when, how long did you tell us? Six minutes. Is that all right? Right, it's on the pitch, yeah. Yep. Doesn't make them mistakes. But I thought after that, Moro, unlike you, you didn't learn from it. You know, I think it's like in the match, if we're a bit quicker, if you've given one away, you know, the next one goes shorter, it all goes easier. But to be fair, it was a gutsy performance because towards the end, you proper recovered it. 
you prob- and maybe that's the, the minutes you haven't played and we've got that around the team. Alfie and Seed, you're poor. That's just how that game was for you, I'm afraid. Alf, if you allow yourself to get bullied in this league, then the, the message will be bully Rutherford. Bottom line is, it, 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 we get the glory, then we have to deal with that. We'll all have the glory. You've had it, Alf, loads. But today weren't good enough up there. Today weren't good enough. I was really pleased. Bob, I was really pleased with you. But we had an overload today, so that's where the game was. Listen, everyone to a man, all the people watching it at home, all that shit, knows we were a fucking great side today. So it's the second game of 46. After six, seven, eight games, we'll know what's what. We are a fucking brilliant side, and we've had a nothing pre-season as well, nothing. We've got a lot more to come. Today, you saw that we've got the ability to run over a team in front of 10,000 at home. We can run them over the way we play. All right, but there's a lot to be proud about today, so well done. Make sure the kit goes in, OK? Cheers, Mark. Appreciate it. Right. We haven't worked before, you have a pension. Where are we? Yeah, probably as big a mixed feelings as you can, you know. On the one hand, you know, you want to... You know, you want to get people talking about you positively and everybody will be talking about us positively because we show some serious bollocks to, to keep playing the way we play. Under pressure, you can't afford to go, you know, whatever, seven, eight, nine thousand, go a goal behind after 10 minutes to an absolute, like, terrible error. Yeah, yeah, definitely mixed feelings. Um, yeah, so I'm disappointed more than anything. I know we played well and showed good character to sort of get a couple of goals late on and, and you know really get back into the game. But yeah, it's another game which we sort of felt like we should have got more out of. I felt like we dominated the game and you know and you're three 0 down and you just think how <laughs> how's this happen when you've had you know it felt like we had more of the ball, more chances, and we're sort of controlling the game. I know they, they definitely had their spells, but um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a game that we should have should have got more out of. Similar to last week, I felt like we should have should have got a win. Sort of a bit of, I mean, you can't lie, a bit of, bit of relief towards the end, I suppose. A um, bit of a shock as well, because it sort of felt like, you know, we were 3 0 up, it felt comfortable. Um, probably could have put the game to bed. Um, but, you know, Dorham worked the way back into it with two quick goals and sort of came from nowhere, really. Well, there'll be loads of people in and around that's watched this on BT Sport today, in and around Dorking that have gone, love that, love the whole thing that's going on there. I'm going to go and watch them next Saturday against Gateshead, do you know what I mean? Um, but, um, so yeah, there's always that kind of like, the brand, the brand has to be there. But we've done that today. And to be fair today, they played, they gave us an overload, and when teams play that way against us, they fucking struggle, and they did struggle. You know, it personally didn't affect me. I don't, it didn't look like it affected any other boys. You know, we still played the way we always play. Um, so it was a regular, Regular game. I mean, obviously, the only difference is this. You know, a lot, a lot more fans. I don't know how many there were here today. Do you know? Eight thousand four hundred. Yeah. So obviously, it's a little bit different to what we were used to last year. So obviously, the noise levels are a bit different. It's, you know, a bit harder to communicate and get get your, you know, speak speak to the players. Um, but no, it, it, I don't, it was it was felt like a normal game, um, just slightly different surroundings. I think that's just the, the way it sort of ended up going, um, and. Credit to Dorkin, I suppose. You know, if that's if that's the way they want to come in and in, impose themselves on a on a game, which is keep ball and you know fair play to them. But um, I think we just used our used our heads a bit more and stayed in a shape and realised that the better way at the time was to was to probably get them on the counter. Which first goal came from that, the second goal came from that as well. And is your experience today any different from, from any other day? Literally only for a couple of minutes, and then it was like right. That's how it is then, is it? Do you know what I mean? Like eating something new for the, like, for the first time. And then I thought, oh, do you know what? You know, then it's, then it's okay, isn't it? So, no, I think, I think I can get used to it, really. It must feel like you belong at this level after the last couple of years. 100%, 100%. It's just about, you know, getting those little details right, being, you know, cutting out some silly mistakes and, and just being, I don't know what the word, a little bit more efficient, you know, not, not you know, we're, again, today we've got, Counted a little bit too easily, so. Um, but yeah, we've shown the last two weeks we're definitely more than comfortable at this level. Shane's been here seven years, run the game, and he, at this level, which is brilliant for him. But we don't want to win the shot, mate. Do you know what I mean? It's no fucking good going. Ah, oh, fuck me. We played well, but we never fucking win. We're here to win, but people need to realise it's our first season at this level, and we, we always try to get used to things, and that's what we'll have to do this year. Thanks for watching Bunch of Amateurs on YouTube. You can get an extra 22 minutes of this episode over on Patreon. 
If you don't fancy paying for it, we understand. If you could hit like and maybe hit subscribe, uh, that would help us grow. So that would be reward enough. And if you leave a comment, that also helps us. So tell us what you think and if there's anything else you'd like to see on the channel.